Chanticleer. It's, it would not be a Chanticleer video <laughs> from me if I didn't say Chanticleer. What's up guys, welcome back. Today we're playing with a bunch of very tiny expensive things. That's right, the brand we're talking about is Chantikai. I was attracted to their summer 2022 collection because one of you guys, it only takes one, tagged me in the release of this. This is the anti-aging face tint. I am, and I'm gonna say this in every video that I mention something that will be included in that video in the future, but there is coming soon a video where I am going to compare all of the cream, liquid, not powder, basically, bronzers that have been coming out this spring, going into summer, from like every brand under the sun. There's NARS, Rose Ink, Make It By Mario, Chantikai. I bought two of the Charlotte Tilbury ones because someone finally was able to, well, I was finally able to get to someone's comment soon enough that I was able to get the fairest shade in stock to be able to compare. I think I'm probably forgetting some. Say has one, I have both of the ones from Chanel. It's gonna happen, okay? And there will be a spreadsheet. <laughs> but in the meantime, before I have all of them in my hands and before I have my head around all the formulas, we're just gonna be trying them individually. So I have this. I also picked up this appallingly expensive thing. It's actually not even appalling, well, it is appallingly expensive and it is Again, Chantikai, I really was expecting something that felt luxurious in size. And when I opened this, I was like, they got, they got me again. It's so tiny because I have this guy that actually, I don't know if I've used on camera yet, but like I, in my mind's eye, when I bought this, I thought this thing was going to be like, you know, like this or, or even, or even this, you know, but for comparison's sake, womp. Um, okay. I'm gonna be doing a whole face of Chantikai, but mainly we're going to be focusing our attention on these two, as well as the new lip colors that came out. So this is the Lip Tint Hydrating Balm. I have Marigold and Sunflower. I think they're the only, I mean, I think that they are both of the shades. They're the full summer capsule, basically. You know, all of this together, I might just do a big cha-ching at the end and like total up how much this face of makeup costs, at least from the Chantikai standpoint, because I don't have like their mascara on the brows and stuff. But I'm going to use as much Chantikai on my face as I possibly can today to really get the full effect because Chantikai has one thing really going for them and that is that their formulas do really perform and that is why I continue spending my big bucks on them for their tiny, tiny, precious packaging. And it's bec it's just because their stuff is exceptional. And I just, I hate to say it, I do. But we also have to be honest about the fact that if you're used to interacting with any prestige brand, any drugstore brand, you're used to products being more abundant than this in most cases. So that is the big brain disclaimer that I have to get out of the way initially so that, you know, you guys know where I stand. This is not a normal amount of money to spend on makeup, okay? Like, it just isn't, but neither is my life. So yeah, I'm going to zoom through pro hmm, anything that gets boring, anything that gets dull as far as products that you've already seen, but we're gonna have final thoughts on the new stuff today. So let's go ahead and jump in. I really like my hair today. I hope that the humidity kind of comes through the windows and makes everything just kind of get a little bit wilder and weirder. Okay, so let's talk about this. This is the anti-aging face tint and it says that it just like adds a bronzy healthy glow anywhere you apply it. But the fact that it has the anti-aging claim and skincare ingredients, just like anything from Chantikai does, I'm going to assume that it can be used all over the face. This is not a first impression. I have already done this. So that is what I'm going to do. That's what she looks like. It really just feels like a bronzer version of the Future Skin gel. I mean, it feels so, so similar to it. It's like, I'm pretty sure that's what's going on here. This is actually, I think, in glass. It feels like metal on the outside, but it's super duper heavy. So I'm guessing it's metal, I mean, glass on the inside. I don't know, you guys. Let's, yeah, let's mix it with just a little bit of foundation, but 
How oh dear, you guys. We have this. Oh, 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 oh. A baby, a baby, baby. Okay. Yesterday we had this <laughs> this deer that was like a loner, and he was just frolicking everywhere. And he was so funny. He was just jumping around, having the best time all by himself. I saw him like around the corner and then I found him in our yard and then he was like sleeping in our yard and I was like, oh, what a nice compliment. <laughs> so I have this in the shade, sheer bronze. And you guys saw there was a little bit of the foundation mixed in there. I, I got indecisive and I choked and this is what we ended up with. Lately I have been really into these products that do kind of artificially temporarily tan my face because I like the look of it and my body tends to get a little bit more color than my face does, but <laughs> that's a little bit, that's a little bit much in terms of contrast. So I'll go ahead and swatch this for the shake, <clears throat> for the shake of the color. So that's really what it's like. And we'll go over how many shades there are at the end when we talk about pricing and everything like that. But if you're used to the Future Skin foundation, the gel, that's very much what this is like, but it is a little sheerer. It does have iridescence to it in the light, which is pretty cool. But Shantika is very mature skin friendly, and so when they do put iridescence in something, it's never glitter. Even this very, very shiny looking bronzer highlight eye and cheek color thing that they put out with this collection, it still isn't glittery, which is really, really nice. This is really, this is really on our way out. I'm going to feel very, very accomplished when I finally finish this and then I'm just gonna buy it again. So anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and do my foundation here. I'm just gonna go with my fingers again. Since they're pretty much the same thing, we're just getting kind of a layered situation. I also have this phenomenal, every once in a while, I just get this weird little pimple right there under my eye and it gets so red, so red. I get so mad. And there's really not anything there. It's just a discoloration almost. Okay. I almost wore a white dress today and then I thought better of that. I was like, do I really want to dry clean this today? Because it would have stained the collar of anything white. So as usual, there is absolutely nothing disappointing about this formula. It feels great, it really does. And you know, you can then go in and use it as just a cream bronzer on top because it really is so similar to their foundation. If you're unfamiliar with that, their foundation, this foundation, they have several, as I'm comparing them, this is a gel weight cream, gel cream, foundation that has like light to medium coverage and it makes your skin look just better than real life. It's It's got this really beautiful satiny silky texture to it that's not dewy and it does dry down. It does have a few different silicones in it and it makes for just a beautiful wear time. It's a little bit blurring. It's a little bit hydrating but it can tolerate you know a good amount of moisturizer underneath and stuff and it's honestly one of my favorite foundation formulas on the market and that is why I have absolutely no problem having paid as much as I did for it. So that's that. I'm going to like blend that up into my, my hairline real quick. <laughs> I've already done this exact face of makeup, kind of a practice run. And I have to tell you, I hope it goes exactly the same way because it went really, really well. It was super, super pretty. I was here in front of my natural light in front of my window and I thought it maybe looked a little bit kind of like blah, you know? I was like, eh, it's sort of, sort of low key, but that's always the way that I feel when I'm on camera. And then I went into my bathroom to just wash my face and I was like, dang girl, you look like a clean beauty knockout. <laughs> I was so like tan and healthy looking. So yeah, just, exaggerate the effects in your mind because just the camera itself, even without any artificial light or anything, the camera itself just makes everything look a little bit more like watered down. I personally do not like the Chantecaille concealer. It's not even a concealer, it's like a stick. And it's just very low tech and very expensive. And I decluttered the one that I had started using and then I remembered 
I have another one. It's just like sitting over there unopened. So that's a lot of fun for me, a thing I will never need. Everybody's been asking about this. This is the Beauty Pie Pro Angled Concealer Brush. I also love their foundation brush and they are coming out with something new. I'm not sure I can talk about it yet, but I will be talking about it soon on my channel. And when they're sending it to me, they were asking me in an email, they're like, is there anything else that you need? And I was like, look, I want all the makeup brushes that you feel generous enough to give me because I am so impressed by the foundation and concealer brush so far. Brushes so far, they are so good. So I'm just using my Item Beauty concealer and just in like these smallest areas, mainly because since I've kind of tanned myself so much with this product, even the Item Beauty, which is in 110, which is actually a very, very good actual complexion, not brightening match for me, it still ends up a little bit bright by contrast with the more tan complexion that I get from this. The Makeup by Mario one, I really expected it to be a little bit more like the Danessa Myricks, the new balm powder. I thought it was going to be pretty sheer, and I guess it is, but like, I haven't tried applying it to my entire face yet. I will do that, but so far it just kind of is, I feel like overstating its use case. It's like, it's a, a face optimizer or something. And I'm like, it's a cream, it's a very nice cream bronzer, but it's a cream, it's a cream bronzer. That's what it is. Let's not blow this out of proportion. Okay, so I don't have a setting powder from them. So I am going to use a little bit of my Kosas, my cloud set here in airy and just set underneath my eyes a little because the bronzer that we're working with is powder. And I just wanna make sure that we get the most ideal application for what you guys wanna see, you know? Sorry, the wind must be blowing in a certain direction today because we're getting a lot of highway sounds. I, I know that that's not the ambiance that you signed up for. Hopefully the birds get chatty and the wind changes. <laughs> this is dealing with nature. So as it's dried down, it's super, super beautiful. It's just, it's always a little bit even better than you expect it to be with Shantikai. It kind of honestly ticks me off how good it is most of the time. You're just like, dad, gum it. <laughs> I wanna hate this because I wanna be able to tell people not to spend their money on it, but they defy me. So now we have the Sunbeam Cheek and Eye Shade in Ray. I think this comes in two shades. Again, we will maybe, oh, no, I think it's only one actually. This is, the package, it's really, really beautiful, like pressed shape, embossed, if you will. There we go. Ooh. And then, sorry, I've been watching a lot of Naomi John. It means a lot more of the thoughts that are in the back of my brain are coming out of my mouth. That's what it looks like swatched, which is actually, hello, what I was expecting from the Pangolin eyeshadow, and the Pangolin eyeshadow ended up being very sheer and very glittery by comparison to what I was expecting. And this is very, very pretty. Oddly enough, I have no idea how they managed to make something that builds and looks like that in a swatch, but when I put it on my skin with a brush as a bronzer, you don't get that like wild iridescence. So that's what I'm going to do now. Let's tuck my hair back real quick. Be cute, be cute, Khaki. I ordered some new glasses yesterday. I got an eye exam and I asked her about LASIK. She said that in your 40s, which, you know, I'm a, I'm a few years out from, but it's not, not close. In your 40s, you start to need reading glasses and that, you know, they're kind of reluctant to do LASIK the closer you get to your 40s because you're gonna have to wear reading glasses anyway, but readers are a lot different than prescription, you know? They're just kind of like for close-up stuff, not a big deal. And that, actually, my prescription, my eye prescription hasn't changed. And that was what they told me the last time and the time before that. So it's like they retest me every single time and yes, I do need corrective lenses because I have astigmatism, but my eyes are not degrading. Like my eye prescription has not changed in, I think like 10 years. Like I can wear every pair of glasses I've ever had. That makes me actually a very good candidate for LASIK because my vision is not changing very much, so. I am going to look into it, but I'm also gonna look into daily contacts. I looked into the Ortho K and she said they're the most uncomfortable thing in the world. Like she goes, I can do it. 
if you want, you know? And I was like, oh, okay. You know, I have my ISO at auto, and I still feel like it's too stinking bright. Well, hopefully you can see what's going on. It's all a, well, all a journey. Man, look at that. Okay, so I did apply a whole crap ton. Ooh, the light's changing, now you can really see. And so you can see a really beautiful reflection there, but not glitter. I mean, you can expect when something looks like this in a pan that it's going to have some reflective quality on the skin, but it's a very polite and classy reflective quality. And I'm going to now use this silly whittle, silly whittle blush. Makes me feel so, just so silly. Even I sent a picture of it to Ingrid kind of in my hand like this, you know? And she was like, oh my gosh, yes, their stuff is so small, whatever. And then she like went locally and saw it. And she goes, it was even smaller in person than it looked in your hand in that picture. And I was like, yeah, I know what you mean. So this guy does have that really beautiful kind of minerality to it. It's super, super pale pink. You can hardly even see it on my skin. And it's almost like a brightening powder. It doesn't really function super well as like a noticeable blush like I like to wear, but we're gonna try and make it work today. But what it does do is kind of blend really well in this like socket area so that I don't have this much contrast and it's so beautifully finely milled it blurs oh it blurs so well it makes me angry and this also comes with this like glitter spray over on the butterfly that gives you this idea that it's going to have this beautiful kind of like mixed shimmer texture the whole time and I mean it goes away instantly you could just go <gasps> and it would go <laughs> it would just be gone uh... It's hard not to be cynical about these things, you know? Especially as like, they're raising, everybody's raising their prices right now. They're just kind of going, huh, you know, inflation, maybe we should just raise our prices. And these were already so expensive. See, it's almost like a setting powder, but it's so blurring, it's so freaking pretty. Like, where are my pores? I don't know her, right? Right? Ugh, ugh. I'm gonna try and leave it at that for my cheeks. That probably won't happen. I do have this, the gel cheek color, cheek gelé. And this is a big old punch of color. So I'm going to try and have some restraint and not do that. But you know, that doesn't always happen. It doesn't always pan out. And that is actually one of the best um, bang for your buck products that they make because it's so, it's so huge. It's like, almost an ounce of product or something. It's ridiculous. 0.8 fluid ounces of product. That's a lot of blush. Okay, so next, since this is a cheek and eye color, I am going to go in with this, which is very easy to find because holy macaroni, that's bright. You can find it in your collection really easily. I have a hair. And I'm going to put that right on my eyelid. Try and get that amount of color that we got on that swatch initially. There is something to be said, not only for the intuitiveness of the colors in this collection, because they are kind of like, you know, sort of skin tone native for a lot of people. It's a little bit peachy for some people probably, or maybe a little bit gold for some people. But also when you're paying for something that's this well formulated it makes for a very mindless application process like you just really it goes so much faster than you think it's going to and you just kind of like blink and it's done because it's so stinking easy and that's why people continue to spend their money on shantikai is because it's pretty foolproof <laughs> pretty foolproof and all the colors like all of the colors that they put out in like their eyeshadows and stuff like there really is something for everybody there's always like I would say this but like a copper a gold a beautiful kind of like medium plum a really pretty wearable olive a really pretty bronzy color and like a pearl you know it's it's really something for every undertone whether certain formulas are your preference is one thing like the pangolin eyeshadow isn't really what I thought it was going to be because it's a little bit more sheer and a little bit more glittery but like I have to admit it's a good formula. It's a very good formula. So this is a really good formula. You know, I initially, when I first put this face of makeup on, I used, oh, um, I used the Byredo palette. Which one is it? Another thing that's easy to find. This is the Disco palette. 
and I grabbed this shade right here, yeah, that one. And that was what I put all over my lid. And then I realized like they're actually very, very similar. And I was like, oh, that's right. It's a cheek and eye shade. So this is the Byredo, the bottom one. It's a little bit shinier, a little bit more velvety, but I mean, they are pretty indis indistinguishable from one another on the actual lid, so. I'm just going to take a clean brush here and I'm gonna dip back in there because it doesn't pick up a ton on a brush, but right here in the center, I find, you know, it's a little bit softer and you don't have to like worry about the embossing. And then I can blend that up. Get a really beautiful like bronzy look here. There is something really, really cool about a formula that you can wear on your cheeks that actually functions really well on your cheeks and then you can wear on your eyes and actually functions really well on your eyes. Like gives me excitement in both places because that's definitely not, like almost never the case. Like if something says that it's like a lip and cheek, it usually works better for one than for the other. Something that says it's an eyeshadow and a something else, it's usually better for one than for the other. It's like, sure, you can put it on your eyes, but is it gonna like impress you? Probably not, but this impresses me on both. What are you? What are you? You try to be so cool and casual, you know? You try to do something low maintenance with your hair. It's just like, oh, this little thing. And then there's just like, <laughs> I see myself on camera and there's something just going ah! from the back of my head. A little bit embarrassing. I'm gonna take a smaller brush here. This is the BK207. The first one was the 202. Dip that right in the center again. I'm going underneath. There's a little mirror in here. That's nice. Great on brown eyes. Kind of pulls out some of the more goldy tones in my eyes. And again, this is something that when I got it on here in natural light, I was like, nah. And then I saw it in my like mirror of truth in my bathroom and I was like, wow, <laughs> I'm adorable. So you guys, you guys can look at this right now, absorb it into your memory memories and tell me, yes, Khaki, that is a beautifully functional one and done. Much function, very function. But you also know that that's not ever where I can leave something because I want a little bit more like coolness and depth right on the outer corners. Because if I'm gonna do all this work, I want my eyes to look bigger and farther apart. And that's what we're doing. And we're doing it with the mermaid eyeshadow here in Starfish. And it's just this like awesome, cool toned satin purple, kind of plummy browny purple. And that's what's going on my outer corner and I'm doing it with that same 207. This is a travel 207, that's why the, like, I don't know if any of you would notice this, but the handle is really short. If you're like, BK brushes, doesn't look like mine. Look why. These formulas are so good. Uh, look at that. <sighs> look at the difference. Depth, just a more believable shadow. It's really pretty okay. And it's actually a lot of product. This is four grams of eyeshadow for comparison. Do I even have a single eyeshadow? I have, each of these is 0.9 grams, the little guys. Like each pan is less, what was that? Less than one gram and this is four grams. Does that make sense? And this is the Kaja, the Bento. So, you know, just for perspective, like this is a, a metric buttload of, uh, of eyeshadow. And I'm just following the natural contour of my eye right there. <sighs> Y'all, it gives me tingles how easy that is and how pretty it looks. It's so subtle. I truly believe they get in their boardroom and they're like, what is the next thing that we're going to make people feel so conflicted about, but so curious about that they can't not buy it. They get it in their hands and then they go, I want to hate this in order to justify how angry I am at the price. And then, and then they love it and they're angry that they love it so much. I think, I honestly think that that's Shantikai's process. That's their creative process. Okay, 
I don't want big sparkly anything really. I kind of want to keep this chill. So I'm just going to take some more of my Kosas cloud set in airy and I'm just going to grab that on my 202 and I'm just going to use that to blend. It has a little bit of a brightening quality to it but more than anything it's just going to make it so that the lines are softer if there were any. Kind of where I've blended. There we go. So a two and done, you know, I accept that. Okay, I'm going to do my eyeliner, my mascara, my brows, none of which are Sean Takai. And then we will come back and we will do both of these lip colors, okay? Okay! the new eyeliner that I picked up at Ulta in Puppy Eyes. It's kind of a beautiful bronze. I like it better than the Victoria Beckham bronze color on me. Then I used my Thrive Mascara, as I always do. And for my brows, I used the Thrive Pencil in Audrey. Then the Kosa's Airbrow, brow, Airbrow in medium brown and then i topped that off with the beauty pie archology eyebrows just like a clear gel to keep them looking a little bit more defined and i am loving it i also used some of the mac fix plus magic radiance idk it's just nice <laughs> it's a little bit too radiant sometimes but i think we're kind of going for a radiant vibe here today so let's go ahead and chat about these here lipsticks so this is a sheer formula it's like a balm almost like a colored balm and i was actually so torn between the two that i just ended up picking both of them up and more than anything it was like I was just anticipating the comments of people being like, well, you really should have picked up the other one. And I was like, life's short, let's just get both. So this is Marigold right here, and it's more of like a caramel, hello? Focus. And then Sunflower is just a little bit pinker and a little bit, maybe even a little bit cooler. So let's go with the darker one first, because I think I'm going to end up with the lighter one on. I mean, darker and lighter, right? Who knows? Like, I'm not even sure. <laughs> they look darker. Like, this one looks darker in the tube, right? But when they go on, they're just different colors. So this is Sunflower. I love the teeny tiny. I'm always a sucker for a teeny tiny little tube. I love it. And at first, I'm always like, ooh, that's a lot on me, you know? And somehow... It just settles. So light, so lightweight, but so nice and balmy. It's not as like heavy or nourishing feeling as their lip chic, but it's similar. It's like a, a slightly lighter weight formula than that. And that is like the sheerness of it all, right? I mean, you can get it to build a little bit, right? But that's about the most saturation I can get out of it. Which is great because that means it's going to work for a lot of people. It doesn't have any milkiness to it. It's very much like a, I don't know, I haven't used it in a long time, but like the Clinique Black Honey or whatever. It's kind of like that where it's so sheer that it's really just color adjusting your natural lip color which it would need to not have any kind of milkiness to it to do that because otherwise for darker lip colors, it's gonna like gather in the lines. Sunflower, absolutely gorge. 
gorge, 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 giving prairie princess. I mean, it kind of goes with the vibe, right? Who knows, maybe that will be the one I end up with on my lips. Yeah, I would not say that these are going to be particularly like, or especially, I guess, long wearing, because they're pretty easy to take off. There's no dry down to them, you know? Here we have Marigold. It's a little, it seems a little bit more pigmented on me. Isn't that sweet though? What a sweet color. It's so nuanced, just like a perfect, perfect kind of rose color. You're right, I should put on sunflower. I can hear you. You're like, yeah, I wish you would just put sunflower on. But it's not bad, is it? Neither of them is, it's so pretty. They're so pretty. Wow. I've never, ever been unimpressed by their lip formulas. They're so subtly pleasing. It might make one mad. Going to make the thumbnail of this video say, getting angry at beautiful makeup. <laughs> Cause that's all it does, it makes me mad. Yeah, that's the one for this look. Sunflower. Mm. Yep. And I am going to try not to do any more blush because I want this to be subtle across the board. That's also why I went in with the Fenty eyeliner instead of my typical Coco eyeliner from Victoria Beckham Beauty is because this is a very, even though it's very tan, it's a low contrast look and I just wanted to keep it low contrast because as soon as you put the contrast in somewhere, you either have to accept that like my eyeliner is gonna glow or you have to bring everything else up to meet it. And I just wanted to kind of keep everything in this same tone, but also the same saturation value. It's just very pretty and wearable. And I do still feel like my eyes are the star. Okay, let's hop on the website real quick and chat about the prices of the new ones and like the claims and stuff. And then we will do my final thoughts. Chanticleer, it's, it would not be a Chanticleer video <laughs> from me if I didn't say Chanticleer. So, oh, sorry. I said it was $88, I meant it was $82. It is $82 for this. Think of all of the things you can buy with $82, okay? But it's very, very pretty. A brilliant all-in-one gel powder formula that gives eyes and cheeks a sun-kissed gleam of warmth that instantly flatters and defines. Packaged in a limited edition, one-of-a-kind, neon marbled art compact. No two are alike. It says using a brush to sweep across the high points of the face can be applied to eyes using a brush or the fingertips. This doesn't really seem to have any big skincare claims. So it really is just all about the limited additionness of it, but it also is only one shade. So it is a highlighter for dark skin and a bronzer for me, I guess. So uh, yeah, that's really all they say about that. It is 4.5 grams of product, 0.16 ounces for 82. Dwellers. The Lip Tint Hydrating Balm Sunbeam Collection. This is, I guess, I'm not a Chantecai expert, but it does seem that this is not a new formula. It's just a new, two new shades in this since it is the Sunbeam Collection. Could be wrong there. An ultra emollient sheer balm infused with cherry and rose extracts to nourish and give the lips a boost of shine. Apply directly to the lips. Start in the middle and work the color outward in case you needed to know how to use lipstick. Okay. So looking actually, actually at the swatch of Marigold, which was the second one that I put on before I wiped it off and put this one on, looking at it on the black model, it does appear that they have struggled a bit to build opacity and that it is appearing a little bit milky. So if you are conscious of that and you are dark in skin tone or dark even just in lip tone, I would steer clear of Marigold and go for Sunflower, the one that I have on right now. It is more, sheer and less white, I would say almost no real white backing. Whereas what I said about that is not true of Marigold. Marigold is very much for like lighter colored lips. If you, if 
the milky thing bothers you. And that is one gram or 0.03 ounces and they are $35 a piece. The anti-aging face tint is $77 and you get 1.06 ounces. For Shantikai, that's a Shiborgan. Okay, and it's got skincare ingredients in it. Let's, let's talk about this. It is $77, uniquely lightweight and sheer. This gel cream glides onto the skin and instantly adds a touch of sun wherever it's applied, boosted with anti-aging botanicals that smooth the skin for a youthful look. Smooth on with the liquid sculpt brush, Begin on the high points of the face, the cheekbones, forehead, and jawline, then buff into the skin, maybe worn alone, which I have done and it was quite pretty, just don't apply, apply as much as I did when I started today, or over foundation for a sun-kissed glow, blend a drop or two to warm and deepen a foundation. So we have a lot of use cases here because of the nature of like the manipulability of the product. It's a very much like a foundation, but it doesn't have a lot of white opacity to it. And so it can be used both as a base, as a bronzer, or to mix in like you would with like the deep bronzy drops or something like that from Drunk Elephant. I think for the price, considering all things Shantikai, this is the most innovative thing that we're talking about today and maybe the most exciting, especially if you're a fan of the Future Skin Gel. So I am seeing reviews that the tint is way too dark. I think maybe you could use too much and it could be too dark, or if you have like Hannah's skin tone and you are green, like you have a lot of green in your skin, this is not probably going to give you a natural tan, and that would be probably my big criticism, is that we are not talking about a shade range here. This is supposed to be kind of a universal face tint, and we all know that the word universal is a fraught. <laughs> it tends to almost never mean universal, so Shantikai is not exactly known for the being the first ones to step their foot into the ring of inclusivity. <sighs> and that is kind of an epidemic among clean beauty brands. A lot of them have come a long way, but kind of the old school ones like Shantikai, they're a little slow on the uptake, aren't they? So yeah, I would love to see three shades in this. It's very sheer, so I don't think that like it needs some kind of crazy exhaustive shade range, but it would be nice to see one lighter that is a little bit cooler toned and one much deeper that might have a little more red in it because I could just see this kind of disappearing onto a lot of people or even looking a little bit kind of like all you see is the shimmer and that's not ideal. So I do, however, love the packaging, love it. I'm pretty sure it's glass, pretty sure it's metal on the outside and it is, I accidentally almost swapped the lids here. It's like the exact same size as the, except this is one ounce, this is 1.06 ounces um, of the Future Skin Cushion. Future Skin Gel, not the same thing. All right, so I mean, I'll give you guys final thoughts on all of the stuff that I used today, but I'm gonna start with the new stuff. So. Do I think that this is a run, do not walk situation? Not really. It's pretty and it is special. This is the, again, Sunbeam Cheek and Eye Shade in Ray. I don't know why they bothered to give it a shade name if it only comes in one shade. Mm. I think that this is neat, especially, especially if you are the kind of person who likes a capsule collection for your makeup. Can I just say though, I'm going to depart on a philosophical tangent here. I think a lot of us want to think that we are that person. We want to think that we are going to have some tiny little makeup bag of things and that this is going to be the thing that launches us into makeup minimalism. If you're not that person, be honest with yourself because it's a trap, okay? For people like me, it's a trap where you're just like, I'm not gonna buy any more makeup. I'm gonna buy this really, really expensive one thing and then I'm gonna use it until I pan it because I'm going to stop spending money on makeup and I'm going to be the person who has that really, really concise, quick and easy face of makeup. Like if this thrills you to have this color that goes on your eyes and this color that goes on your cheeks and you're going to use it for both and you really feel like you're gonna get a ton of use out of it regardless of whether it is the only thing in your makeup collection or one of the million things in your makeup collection, then absolutely more power to you by all means if it fits in your budget. But 
do not let something like this tantalize you into thinking that you're turning over a new leaf if you know that you are a makeup maximalist like I am, or at least my collection is a makeup maximalist collection. So yeah, this is a butt ton of money for something that again, exists as an eyeshadow in so many places in my collection. Is it a really pretty like bronzer? Yes, it is, but like, we're about to do a deep dive on bronzers, guys. And honestly, like you could probably get the same effect from this. And this is so much more cost effective. So much more cost effective. Um, and it does dry down, which is lovely. You know, this is not going to stay tacky or gross. So this is moving, moving right along my natural segue there, the anti-aging face tint. While I think that they should have more shades, I do think that. And if you can go like swatch it in person, or I mean, honestly, there are products like this on the market. They exist from lots of different brands. I would have to think about it. Oh, maybe the Glossier ones? IDK. I'm not sure, but leave it in the comments below if you've seen a product like this before that comes in multiple shades because that is the big shortcoming here. It's like releasing a foundation in one shade. That's pretty stupid, but it is a very, very pretty product. And especially for people who use something like the debronzy drops or something and you like to be able to kind of deepen your foundation shades like the um like the fenty body sauce right it's a little bit like that except it has less opacity to it maybe this is for you it doesn't have a fragrance it's going to be better at least for your skin if you're like me slightly sensitive to fragrances in your makeup kind of thing i do really really like it and i think it's the most cost effective option here out of everything that i tried today and again if you are a big fan of the consistency of the Future Skin Gel Foundation. This is super comparable in my opinion. And then these guys, I, you know, like I said, I think that, I'm gonna double check. Yes, Lip Tint Hydrating Balm has existed before this. These just happen to be special edition shades. Hopefully I was able to illuminate the differences between these two because they do kind of look like they would wear similarly online. I would definitely recommend Sunflower for deeper skin tones if you're conscious of like the milky thing sinking into your lips. It's going to be more of a sheer wash whereas Marigold is going to have a little more opacity to it, behave a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more like a lipstick. And they're $1 more than the other ones. They're $35 instead of $34, but I think that they're gorgeous. And it makes sense that this is a formula that's been around for a long time because it feels a funnest. It's so pretty, it's so pretty. And it's just enough color. I like it very much. And I have paid this much for a lip product like this in the past and been quite disappointed, like the ones from Rowan and stuff like that. So I don't think this is like crazy, crazy, but also it's not gonna change your life. Like if you are looking for the next life-changing product to part with like $35, of your money for, this is probably not it. I would only get this if like $35 is like not that much money to you. You know what I mean? If that feels like kind of something you would leave as a generous tip for somebody on like a pedicure, then sure. But if $35 is, well, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Like if you're on a budget and $35 is a lot of money, then don't, don't splurge on this. It's not going to change your life. You know, we have to be realistic. As far as the rest of the stuff, I reach for this way more than I thought that I ever would, the Mermaid Eyeshadow and Starfish, mainly because this is one of my favorite colors to wear, just on my skin tone. I am dropping things. I have a little yellow in my skin, so something that has a little bit of purple in it like this does tend to make a really good, believable, muddy shadow on my skin because the yellow in my skin cancels out the purple to some extent, and it just kind of pulls a cool brown, which is lovely. I like the texture of it because it's just a satin, so it doesn't accentuate a lot of texture, but it does show up. It's very, very pretty, it builds. The pangolin that I didn't use today, again, I would steer clear of that if you're expecting it to be this really nice consistent sheen that I was able to get from the Sunbeam Cheek and Eye Shade because it's not that, it's quite glitre. And I will uh, link, if I remember, <laughs> I will link the previous video where I tried that one so as you can see it in action because if you're expecting that, it's a touch underwhelming. This little guy, this little piggy went to market. This little piggy stole my money. Hmm, uh, I cannot, I mean, there's really no getting around how disappointing opening up a package that you paid this much for. Let's see, how much was this? <laughs> oh no, I paid $42 for this. Yes, I paid $42 for this. Shantikai has never sent me PR. Hello, Shantikai, you've never sent me PR. <laughs> anyway, this was $42 and it's so beautiful, but like 
the color difference between what's online, what I'm looking at right now, what I'm holding in my hand, it could be the difference between it working on you and not working on you because it is, it is almost just a brightening pink powder. It is not the beautiful, soft coral rose that it looks like it is online. The saturation just isn't there. I mean, it really is just like kind of like a pink blurring powder. So this is a little bit disappointing on a lot of fronts. I will continue using it because it's so beautiful and blurring. Uh, and even the worst thing from Shantikai is better than some of the best things from other brands. And again, this will be, <laughs> I'm not gonna title it, maybe I will, honestly, but getting angry at beautiful makeup, like that is this video. <sighs> but this is really beautiful. It is, but I don't think it's worth the money. Meh. I think that that's it for Shantikai for this video. I think that's all of it. So I hope that this was, was fun for you guys. And I freaking love this face of makeup, okay? Like, let's not get it twisted. I look great. I look great. I feel great. My skin is happy. This is high quality, gorgeous, luxurious, beautiful makeup. And as someone who rarely pans things, I am quibbling on behalf of people who use makeup in a normal capacity, like actually use one thing day after day after day for a long, long time. That's why I'm quibbling because I'm never going to probably pan these, well, with the exception of the freaking powder, I mean, the uh, foundation, like I'm going to finish this. But I do just wanna always bear in mind that a lot of times when people are investing in something like Shantikai, they are thinking of it as an investment in themselves and in the routine to feel fancy. And I want to draw a strong distinction between the game changing products and the ones that are just expensive. You know, it's just expensive if Shantikai is something that you can very comfortably afford kind of thing. So hopefully I helped to illuminate that. And if you guys did enjoy this, please do give it a thumbs up. If you want to keep hanging out with me on this channel, hit the button down below and subscribe. I would love it if you guys did. Thank you so much for watching and for hanging out with me today. I love you guys so, so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.